Hello everyone and welcome to the course Learn Program Basics. The components that make up the data entry window help make data entry go quickly and smoothly. Key information is clearly marked and easy to find. Let's get to know the data entry window. In this lesson, we will discuss the parts that make up a typical data entry window. First, let's talk about the different sections that make up the windows. There's a title bar, menu bar, data control bar, and toolbar. Then the header, the grid, the footer, and the status bar. We'll look at the title bar first. The title bar lets you know exactly where you are in the software. In this example, we are in the 1-3 journal transaction window. The title bar not only includes the name of the menu you are in, it also shows the corresponding numbers. The first number refers to the main menu item. So we are in the main menu item 1 general ledger. The second number refers to the submenu. In this example, we are in submenu item 3 journal transactions. The second part of the title bar displays the name of the company as well as the SQL server name that you're currently logged into. Next we have the menu bar. The options on the menu bar may be different depending on which data entry window you are in. Some data entry windows have more options and some have fewer options. Below the menu bar is a data control bar. This is where the record number of the entry is displayed and you can use the arrows to scroll forward and backwards to find a particular transaction. To the right of the data control bar is the toolbar. The toolbar consists of common commands used in that particular window. Most toolbars have options to save, create a new record, recall the last displayed record, find records, cut, copy, paste options, access to change the posting period, you can attach a file to a record, you can enter notes for a record, and you have the option to print a record. But again, the commands may be slightly different from one data entry window to another. The header portion of the window contains text boxes to enter information about the transaction. The first thing you'll probably notice are the asterisks or stars next to some of the boxes and column titles. When you see the asterisk next to the title, it means information in that box or cell is required before you can save the record. Information is not required in the boxes or columns without the asterisk. However, there is one exception to this rule, but we'll get into that when we talk about the grid. You'll also notice there are arrows next to some of the boxes. The arrows pointing downward indicate there is a lookup window or a quick list available for that box. To see which option is available, simply hover your mouse over the arrow and a message appears letting you know if you can access a lookup window or a quick list. Let's take a quick look at the lookup window. You can open the lookup window either by clicking in the box and press F5 on your keyboard or you can simply click the down arrow. Notice there is a gray arrow next to the record number column heading. As you click on the individual columns, the gray arrow appears to indicate that that column is searchable. Once you know which column you want to search by, simply click the column heading and the gray arrow appears to indicate the column you are searching by. Now you can search for the record using the data control bar. Just enter the item you're searching for. For example, if you were searching for a specific transaction number, enter that number in the data control box in the software searches a transaction number column. Once you start to type, the system starts to search. As you can see, the system found the transaction I was looking for. You can simply double click on the record and I can now view my record in the 1-3 journal transaction window. Now let's go back and take a look at your other options with the down arrows. The other option provides a quick list. Let's open the quick list for a description box. A quick list is a customizable list of frequently used items. In this example, an item beginning balances was created. Now instead of typing beginning balances on each and every record you want to use the description on, you can simply open the quick list and double click on the item. 
and it appears in the box. Another good place to set up a quick list is when you're entering a vendor record. If you have several vendors that are in the same city, you can set up a quick list for cities. A quick list saves you time from having to manually type the same city over and over again. All right, the last feature we're going to look at is the View Add Records button. This button allows you to enter a new record on the fly, meaning you don't have to exit out of the window, open another window, create a new record, and then come back to the original window you were in. Clicking the button opens the window associated with that box. Or you can place your cursor in the box and press F6 on your keyboard. We'll click the View Add Records button next to the vendor box. And the 4-4 vendor window opens. Here you can enter a brand new vendor record or view an existing vendor record. And once you exit this window, you're back in the original window. The View Add Record feature saves you time from having to close and open several windows to complete a task. We've looked at the different commands available in the header portion of the window. Now it's time to take a look at the grid options. Before we talk about the grid menu, we need to address the exception mentioned earlier. Remember that the titles with the asterisks meant that it was a required field, but there was one exception to that rule? In this example, that exception occurs in the grid. As you can see, the account column is a required field, but the subaccount column is not required. If an account is used that is set up to use subaccounts or departments, the software requires that the subaccount or department is entered in the subaccount column. Since there is not an asterisk next to the subaccount, you will get a notification that it's required upon saving the record. Now let's take a look at the grid menu. To open the grid menu, click in any cell in the grid, then right click your mouse. And the grid menu opens. As you can see, you have several options. From here, you can open a lookup window for a particular column, access records from different areas of the software, cut, copy, and paste information within the grid, insert a new row, cut a row, or clear rows. You can also customize the look of your grid, adjust the width of the columns to accommodate information in the cells, search for specific information within the grid, and you can choose to have the cursor move to the next column or down to the next row when pressing enter. If you want to customize the grid, click the show hide columns option. A window opens displaying a list of all the columns in the grid. Here you can choose to hide columns that you don't use very often, making data entry quicker and easier. So let's say you don't want to see the description column when you're entering information into the grid. All you have to do is uncheck the box next to description and click OK. The description column is now hidden from the view. If this is how you want the grid to look each and every time you open this window, open the grid menu and click Save Current Grid View. Now whenever you open this window, the description column will be hidden. But if you want to be able to see the description column, click the Show Hide Columns option and simply click the checkbox to select it. Now the description column is back. Remember, if you customize the grid view and want it to look that way each and every time you open that window, be sure to click the Save Current Grid View option. Also, grid customizations are user specific. In other words, if you customize the grid and save the grid view while you're logged in as one user, then you log in as another user and open that same window, the changes you made to the grid will not appear. You'll have to customize it as that user as well. We've gotten to know the header and grid areas the footer area of the window contains information about the transaction. Keep in mind, depending on where you are in the software, will determine on if the information in the footer portion of the window is the same. The information that's standard in each of the data entry windows are the date the record was created and the user who created the record. The last part of the window is the status bar. This area prompts you for the information a certain box or cell is looking for. 
In this example, the cursor is in the description box. So on the status bar, the prompt lets you know that it's looking for a description of the transaction. Let's give it a try. Open Sage 100 Contractor and explore the data entry windows. Play around with the lookups, customization, and toolbar menus. When you are finished, return to this lesson and select Continue. You've just seen how to use the data entry window. Next, you'll see how to locate records and use function keys. Sage offers several ways for you to interact and get the answers you need quickly. Get help from others with similar questions in a Sage City community, find answers in our knowledge base, or take an online course on Sage University.